Oh, welcome back my gardening friends. Well, I'm going to attempt to try and get the water running here in the uh, wildlife uh, pond area and I'm also going to attempt to clear and rebuild the wildlife area where hopefully all the creatures that want to can go in there whether they be friendly or not but we have to help uh, nature out but first of all I want to attempt to get this uh, up and running I've run this before on a 6 volt battery using the uh, whale 12 volt whale pump 6 volts made it go slower and uh, this is quite powerful and I've used it for several little jobs it's nearly as powerful uh, as a hose but as you could imagine it wouldn't come out there nice and slow and drop into this contained water feature that I've cut a V in so that it drops down uh, into the uh, the pond we have got a couple of fish and I do know that uh, I've got a frog now when I was tidying it up so on my travels I do see bits of copper pipe and I'll always pick it up normally leave it next to a skip saves the tatters uh, from jumping in the skip and taking it but this has got a lever on it I thought when I saw it I thought that would be ideal I could actually turn that lever so far to reduce the amount of water that goes through so let's see how it works if it works just going to soften the uh, hose pipe some boiling water just before I add my coffee for a cuppa so there on, I'll just put you on the stand and uh, we'll see uh, if we can make it uh, work properly. Just turn the valve down. got a bit of a leak at the moment this is all uh, all just a little bit temporary I want to push fit because that whale pump I'll be using to transfer water from the galvanized tanks on plot one into the drums uh, in the future and the solar panel and solar controller will keep the battery uh, topped up not so much in the winter but uh, we'll see how this works might be able to turn that down a wee bit more That'll just add a little bit of noise to uh, the allotment and just help uh, aerate the pond uh, for the fish, but they normally cope quite well. So with a few adjustments and a few tightening up, put a push fit on, I can then remove it and move it elsewhere, but I'm happy with that. And so are the fish. So the wildlife uh, area, sanctuary, whatever you want to call it, um, it's uh, taking its toll. It's uh, gathering, well, a bit of a dumping ground, things that I've uh, collected, uh, etc. And I need to uh, open all this up, get it tidy, put some cocoa koi. We've got plenty of it down to help uh, suppress some of the weeds, tidy up. But the main thing is uh, dismantle all of this and have a look, add some of the extra materials that we've got, get rid of some or just wind them up and uh, pop them inside. But we can add some of these and uh, we'll see what uh, happens because uh, Mr. Badger wants a bit of room. I had these uh, roof slates off um, Jacko from Jacko's allotment and I thought I could stack those so the bugs could get in and live. So we'll be adding those. But I'll stand you back here somewhere 
and uh, we'll strip it down and I'll bring you back as and when uh, there's anything uh, to see because I haven't uncovered this now for two or three years. Let's just go and have a little closer look. So a little bit of evidence there that something's uh, been uh, living there. There's some three-year-old sunflowers, and uh, realistically, they're still strong, and they they love going uh, going into the uh, corners. And uh, there's uh, evidence of uh, a nest there. So September the ideal time just in case there are any nesting birds etc so we'll uh, remove some of this uh, unless I find something and then we'll just adjust things and some of these logs have got holes in so we'll bring you back again shortly well all the animals have come out to see what I'm up to let's have another little closer look I think they're all watching in anticipation. Uh, these are some logs that uh, when I used to cut my own wood uh, that have got uh, holes in. They'll get used when they get used. Uh, they're rotting down so there'll be all sorts of uh, creatures that can get in there. I've just pulled a few of the wildflowers out. It's exposing uh, the uh, cooking apples now. And we can get this tidied up once a few more things uh, die back so we'll straighten the fence up and I think we'll stack the tiles in so that it doesn't push the fence over again As you can see I've stacked them, not properly, so that there's holes all the way through, gaps between each ones and on the left at the bottom I've laid a few slates level so there's a little run there for any creatures that uh, want to hide from the, their predators. And I've finally stacked all the ones with the holes in so there's different little nooky holes uh, for any hedgehogs that may want to uh, visit and stay uh, on my uh, growing space. I'd be happy to live over the winter there, but don't tell Mrs K that, else I'll be out. Here's a few more things that we've got that we can add. Is a bit of straw rope or something similar. A few little things there that Mrs K's threw out. We've got these, we've got that we can pop in. It'll rot down nicely. Uh, there's that there. And then we'll uh, see what we've got left to uh, just cover the top once we put the uh, sheet on. We wouldn't want them to get wet, would we? Ain't that sweet? Look at those eyes staring at us. Mrs. K just used a bit of Tipex when she had them in the garden. And one of these lanterns does still actually uh, work. These will probably not stay on top of here when the wind doth blow. And I've got a hedgehog. in my wildlife area. It's 
my granddaughter bought me these two things and uh, I can see them again just needs uh, a little bit more of a tidy up a bit more compost down there to stop everything from growing back as you can see the sun burnt all those ferns uh, back I can see you hiding over there so let's pop over to uh, and see what's going on in a few other places before we leave today some finds and uh, we don't want to run it for too long the solar panel uh, it did break it's actually glass don't try and drill glass guys so getting uh, that one put back on uh, we saw that in a previous video it flew all the way onto the floor and uh, we're getting uh, quite a bit of rainwater from that now we've had two thunderstorms and two downpours I found acquired four more uh, barrels these haven't been cut yet undecided what I'm doing with them I found another three pallet collars so that's six in total recently to go with the rest that we have still got to connect these up over the strawberries it won't be long before we're trying to get some rhubarb out for the Malvern show and I'm very pleased with some of the uh, carrots we've got for the Malvern show. They won't be winners, but it's taking part. Hopefully, it won't be all top and no bottom. We'll be revealing uh, the condor potatoes, so hopefully we've got a big one for that. And look at the amount of rainwater we've collected here. If you remember, all these barrels are 6,800 litres and I must have collected at least Ooh, 2,000 litres uh, off the uh, the polytunnel and uh, the siphoning system as you can see must be working because we're at the same level at the front of the polytunnel as we are at the back this tank is nearly full the sink collecting water as well is full and overflowing need to empty that and uh, there's the amount of water we've had this tank is full but I have drained it out as you can see there uh, we've just got uh, probably uh, 150 litres to go before that uh, is full and overflowing it overflows in a sort of a fashion and drops into this tank but I do help it along its way green manure coming along nicely and the peas in the gutter not sure of the germination but there's plenty there we'll see if we can get uh, an autumn winter crop and it looks like this something's found that tomato that I popped on the floor courgette still giving first bed of uh, green manure beans we did and I've uh, only just managed to get these in time before the storms I'm collecting the uh, pods off them and you might be able to see there you get about six to eight seeds in each pod and uh, I've got plenty there to go at the variety was unknown but these are the uh, radish uh, icicle long white and I'll have to look back on the videos for uh, the uh, the other one the new roof to the quadruple uh, bins even at that angle has collected uh, quite a bit of water we're almost to uh, capacity on those I did get a comment why did I put that uh, up there so high could have lowered it down I could do but I didn't want to bump my head that drop of rain and the uh, swish chard is going mad and hopefully we'll get some seed from the uh, first sowing of the sweet the chard save volunteer tomatoes there we'll leave them be hopefully they'll uh, come good and I've entered uh, three of my carrots into the Malvern Autumn Show so hopefully I'll find three good ones I'm sure I will so these are my uh, wood chip paths and even though we've had all that rain 
most of it's just run away. It does take a long time to soak in when everything's dry, it'll just run straight down without actually soaking in, right down into the ground and probably filling the wells of my uh, fellow plot holder down the bottom of the hill. Sorry for keep showing you these, but uh, as someone would say, they're awesome. Amanda Moo would wiggle her finger. Happy gardening to you all. Till next time, my friends. Ta-ra for now.